Hey, what's up, you two? I'm back again, continuing or starting to wrap up my USMC series. Um, and right now, I'm gonna show you guys the uh, USMC M1941 um, Haversack, Knapsack, Field Pack, whatever you want to call it. I prefer to call it the Field Pack. So, this is what the standard ones looked like. Um, not that there were really any other variants. I mean, they had a nylon version of this, but that wasn't until later on, and those were just experimental. But um, so this is made out of a uh, thick canvas, and on the front right here, it has um, eyelets for you to put uh, what was intended for uh, um, an e-tool, or the M1943 e-tool specifically. If you haven't seen my review of that, then go check it out. Um, or I suppose if you really want to, you could put your machete, but that'd be kind of a weird spot. Not to mention they had a spot on the side right here to put a bayonet or a machete using the same uh, eyelets. And then it had a little loop, which these are often cut off. And then it also has another loop right here, but I'll explain that for later. Um, and that has a strap on the bottom here to hold it down. And then coming around over here. You see the adjustable shoulder straps, both have these two loops here, again I'll explain what that's for later. And then it has a spot to clip, uh, this was originally designed to uh, clip on the back of the M1 Grand Belt uh, cartridge ammo belt, um, but these really weren't all that great in general. Um, you, would, you could put it on your pistol belt, but that was just for the um, actual full 782 gear, which I'll explain later too. Um, you can see on the back that it has someone's name, Reese. I uh, don't know who Reese is, but their name comes up all over this pack. It is on the bottom, uh, and these uh, adjustable straps do come out and have uh, metal rings on the side. Again, I'll explain what those are for. Um, there's some more places where Reese comes up on here. This hook always gets caught on anything. That's why a lot of the times if you look, like on mine, there's actually an L rip shape in it because um, it must have gotten snagged or something. Uh, but let's open up the pack. Now it can get bigger, but before I open it up, I'll show you guys, in case if you don't own one of these, um, for a reference of the size it is. Here's a standard binder uh, you could pick up at any store. And that's about the size it is. Um, it can expand more, but I just like to keep it like this. And then, help keeping it shaped, I just have flat rate bucks uh, just for show. And then on the inside, I had uh, an extra belt and an eight point cover. I'll explain why I keep this around in a minute or in a later video. Um, and then under the flap right here is where you'll be able to find the date usually. And I'm not sure if the camera can read it very well so I'll do my best. It says... I really can't read that at all. DSA 100- Three five two seven, I think. I don't know. These things got beat up pretty good um, since they made these from World War II all the way up until the late 60s. I think maybe even in the early 70s, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. So if you guys um, have any questions about this, um, oh, before I go, uh, I did want to mention that there is a, a lower part. Um, to complete the 782 gear, the M41 lower pack, and this was designed to carry your main essentials while the lower pack carried the tent pole and the tent stakes and usually a bedroll, so like a poncho or poncho liner, and then on the top here, what this strap is for is that you would put the um, either a poncho and poncho liner or the uh, for long marches, the shelter half, the uh, OD1 or if you're lucky enough, the Mitchell Pattern Shelter half. So again, um, if you guys have any questions about this, just let me know. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and have a good one.